name is Maria. I work at the Ministry of Agriculture. I'm looking forward to hearing about Chinese experience and bringing it back to Africa. Pleased to meet you. I'm Amos and I'm a farmer. I won a farming prize to visit China. I wonder how Chinese farmers manage to increase crop production. And I'm excited to climb the Great Wall. My name is Li Long. Welcome to my farm. Thank you for inviting us. It's a pleasure to meet with you, Mr. Li. I hear that you're having a bad drought, but I see that your crops are doing very well. What is your trick? Well, my trick is conservation agriculture. Conservation agriculture? I've heard about it. It's reported to be a common practice now in the U.S. and Brazil, and is spreading within Latin America and Central Asia. Did you say conservation agriculture? I've seen it in Zambia. Tell us more about it. It is a new way of growing crops that saves labor and makes the land healthy. Three important things. First, no plow, no till. Second, cover the soil. And third, rotate crops from year to year. Have you benefited from this new way of farming? In a lot of ways. First, less soil erosion in my field. Remember point one, don't plow? Plowed fields without vegetation cover get easily eroded by wind and water. Soil erosion is a big problem in our region. Yes, you often see earth-colored water running off farmlands. I heard about the Great Dust Bowl of the last century in the U.S. That was because of plowing large fields year after year. And to address this problem, the U.S. started no-till. Well, in China, we also have bad dust storm problems, and they affect cities too. Soil erosion used to be my headache. That was partially why I decided to stop plowing. No plow? How do you sow seeds? I use a disc plow to loosen the soil. Not even an animal-drawn plow? Plowing creates a hard plowed pan. Plowing reduces water infiltration and moisture holding. Plowing disturbs soil organism. Plowing exposes organic matter, releases greenhouse gases. Actually, we say the deeper you plow, the more you lose. Hey Li Long, in our region, when heavy tropical rains hit bare soil, the runoff washes away topsoil. Can conservation agriculture help? Yes. Remember the second point of conservation agriculture? Cover the field. Right, Amos. Under conservation agriculture, I leave crop residues in the field to cover bare soil after harvesting. So, runoff and evaporation are both reduced. Oh, I see. More moisture is kept in the soil for crops to grow. It helps during dry spells and droughts. And when soil is covered with residues, the surface wind speed is slowed down. It reduces soil blown from farmland too. At home, I burn crop residues. It clears the field and makes it look tidy before planting. Oh no, I used to do that too, but no more. Under conservation agriculture, you don't burn residues. Burning crop residues is like burning your fertilizer. Burning releases greenhouse gases and smoke pollutes the air. Li Long, what about crop rotation? Your third point. It's growing crops in sequence, taking advantage of their different agronomical features. Green crops for food security, cash crops for income and resilience, lagoon crops for nutrients. For me, after wheat harvest, I directly seed maize with no-till. Sometimes I add a lagoon crop to improve soil nutrients and control pests. 
What about farmers in Zambia, Amos? Some farmers grow a cereal crop, followed by a cash crop like cotton, then a legume crop such as beans. In Africa, farmers often use crop association through intercropping rather than crop rotation. Some innovative farmers practice agroforestry, using phydabia trees in croplands. They call them fertilizer trees, whose nitrogen-rich leaves drop on the ground during the cropping season, enriching the soil and making crops stronger. That is so interesting and innovative. What crops would work well under conservation agriculture? You can use it for most crops. I grow maize, wheat, groundnuts, soybeans, and even rice. Li Long, this is all wonderful. Now let's get to specifics. What do you advise me to begin with if I want to do conservation agriculture? Well, you should begin at harvest. Either you harvest your crops manually or by machine. Leave twenty centimeter height of residue on the ground. What if we need crop residues to feed livestock? How do you manage it? I cut the upper half of my maize crop for livestock, leaving the lower half on the ground. I also started to grow a fodder crop this year. So, how much residue should I leave in the field? The more, the better. If you don't have enough, you should at least cover thirty percent of the field. Distribute the residues evenly. Does conservation agriculture require special seeds? No, I use undamaged seeds with a high germination rate. I pre-mix them with chemicals against pests and diseases. How do you seed if you don't plow? Wouldn't the ground be too hard to sow? You can use no-till seeders like these. Over time, mulching makes the soil soft to work with. How do you deal with pests and diseases with all the straw on the ground? I spray pesticide, but best to use integrated pest management measures. How do you control weeds if you don't plow? You can weed by hand, herbicide, or machine. You should control weeds before they set seed, so weeds become less of a problem over time. I hear conservation agriculture could increase manual labor input, but you said it reduced labor input. How? I used to do four operations. Now I do only two, big savings. Can you ensure good crop yield? Yes, I get seven tons per hectare of maize, higher than the conventional method. I see, lower input costs, higher yields. These lead to increased income. Conservation agriculture stores carbon in soils and reduces GHG emissions. It is. Climate smart. We farmers can be climate smart. Healthy land and sustained production make us better prepared for climate change. Absolutely. Li Long, was it easy for you to switch to conservation agriculture? It has been a learning process. I learned it from these sources: village meetings, farmers' tourings, and radio and TV. Li Long, how does government support conservation agriculture? Hmm, it's best to talk to our extension officer, Miss Jiang Ying. I'm pleased to meet you. China now has six million hectares under conservation agriculture. Our government has supported in four ways. First, through demonstration in areas with potentials. Of scaling up. Second, give incentives to the private sector to manufacture affordable machines. 
Third, provide subsidy on machineries relating to conservation agriculture. And the last, support research and farmer training. Can you explain more about machinery? Come here. Look at this cedar. It is designed for no-till. It does everything in one operation, with functions such as anti-blocking, stubble breaking, and depth control. This tractor-mounted chisel ripper opens shallow planting furrows. This is a combined harvester with residue chopper. It spreads straw evenly on the field as it harvests. It seems that the scaling up of conservation agriculture in China benefited a lot from innovative mechanization, right? Right. Innovation in agricultural mechanization has helped a lot. Indeed. It is a key for me to switch to this farming practice. Where does conservation agriculture work well? Here, we found that it works more effectively in these regions where soil moisture is a constraint, or farmers have surplus residues to burn, or where labor is short. Seeing is believing. I will share what I learned with our farmers. Thank you, Lee. You're welcome. I hope one day I can visit your countries. Please join us for dinner and taste our local food produced by conservation agriculture. Today has been wonderful. I have seen how conservation agriculture works in China. It can help us feed our families and raise income while reducing soil erosion and climate change impact. Colleagues, conservation agriculture can help address issues of productivity, land degradation, and climate resilience. Our government should support extension, farmer learning, and agriculture mechanization. Conservation agriculture pays. I have seen it in China.